So we have turned our chicken out the right way. We have sorted out our points and our corners and we are now ready to add the filling. Your toy filling can come off and I've sort of separated quite a big lump here. I don't want all of that to go into my chicken in one go because it could lead to further lumps and bumps within the chicken. So what I'm going to do is just break a little bit off and I'm just going to separate it out. And once I've separated out, you can do a little bit at a time. It's entirely up to you. You'll get into a rhythm with it. And then I'm going to insert it into my chicken. I'm going to use the point of my scissors, but again, if you've used a pencil or a knitting needle, you can use this as well. So pop in and you want to make sure that you are getting your filling right into the point. So I'm just using the very tip of my scissors to help me get my filling into that point, which is going to give it a really nice shape on the finished chicken. I am then going to just repeat that process, making my way round the chicken body and working my way from the sort of the furthest points up towards the opening with my filling. You want your chicken to feel nice and firm, to be able to stand up without needing any further support. You want some stuffing going right into your tips and that just gives you a really nice shape. It can be tempting to put loads of stuffing in to create it so it's really, really solid. This can be counterproductive. It can put your seams under a little bit of pressure and it can also make sewing up your turning gap. This was uh, an example I prepared earlier. It can make sewing up your turning gap a little bit harder. So you want to get a sort of a nice balance between a well supported structured chicken and not overstuffing it so it's really, really hard. So for the purposes of sewing up your chicken, there are two methods that can be used to sew up your turning gap. The one that I have here on the left hand side is over sewing and the one that I have here on the right hand side is ladder stitch. Both of these have separate tutorials on how to do them. So pick the one that you like the look of and use that to sew up your turning gap. So I've pretty much worked out where I would like my button to sit. So I'm just very carefully going to poke the needle just through so I can mark the spot. Now we're going to sew both buttons on at the same time. To do that, I'm going to do some starting stitches. Do three small stitches in the same place and these stitches will sit under the button so we don't have to worry about them being visible on the chicken at all. So again I've pinched my tail and I'm going to just do another couple of stitches. Now because we're using a double length of thread when we pull the stitch so that it sits against the surface of the fabric we want to make sure that we haven't got any loops. So just do a quick double check as you pull the thread through and there we go. So my final stitch, one final tug, everything's secure. So we're then going to cut off that tail because we don't want it getting in the way. Now I'm going to sew the first button on but we're actually going to put two buttons on at the same time. So I've threaded my first button into position and I'm going to poke my needle through and I'm going to have a quick look and sort of work out where I want my second eye to sit and I think I'm fairly sort of central. Now this is where it helps to have 10 pairs of hands and just before I pull the needle through I'm going to slide that button, which I want to sit against the head, just enough for me to work out if I'm happy with the position. So I've got my first button held against the chicken's head so I can just have a quick look at the chicken to make sure that I'm completely happy 
with where I have bought my needle out and then I'm going to pull my thread through. I'm going to now take my needle back down through the other hole in my button and I want to come out fairly close to where I did my starting stitches and went through my first hole. Now you'll notice at the moment my buttons are flopping all over the place and what we want to do is just gently tease them together so that they sit nice and evenly on the head. Now we want our buttons to be firm. So to finish up and to finish my thread off, I'm going to go like I'm going to make a stitch like I've done to sew the button on, but this time I'm going to angle the eye so that I come out bring my needle out underneath the button near my stitches that I've been doing and I'm going to pull that through. Now this is where you might need to squidge your chicken a little bit, squash it down, lift the eye up and you're going to do your finishing stitches underneath the button. Now I've got to squash my chicken quite a bit so I can get a good grip and start to do those finishing stitches so I'm just gonna do a few more there and then we're on to our finishing touches on. and the last one and then we can cut our thread off when you cut your thread off make sure that you are nice and close to the fabric without cutting it and there we have our eyes are on so where you've had to squidge your chicken a bit you might just need to just do a little bit of shaping and then we are now going to go and have a final press to straighten the comb and then we're going to use some sellotape to pull off any bits of stuffing or fluff that have got caught onto the chicken so I've just pressed the comb back into position and now I'm just going to use some magic tape just to take off any bits of fluff and anything that might have got caught up during the construction process. Sometimes the stuffing can sort of poke out a little bit so you might just need to pull a few strands out, run some tape over, could use sellotape and we're almost there with your finished chicken. Well done. So once you've mastered the basics, the possibilities with the Chickadee Chicken are endless and you can personalise, you can make it yours. There's all sorts of things you can do. The basic principle for the size is that the long side of the rectangle is twice the short side. I usually work out what I want my finished dimensions to be and then add my seam allowances so that I make sure that I add a seam allowance onto every edge and that then just gives me that the right dimensions for the pyramid shape. So we can vary the size, we can fill them with different things so they can smell nice, you can add decorations, you can mix and match your fabrics to represent the interests or perhaps the person you're making the chicken for. So you can really have fun with it and enjoy it. Something else you can do is swap the position of the beak and the comb so that you get a different seam orientation. 